just thank you so much. You've done the thing that um, politicians at their very best do, which is uh, uh, seize a moment when it appears. And the sight of you joining the Sunrise Movement, uh, young people, uh, in the Speaker's office to say time for change was a galvanizing moment. It took this fall when we've had these one disaster after another and one huge report after another and, and made them politically real in a sense. And so such gratitude. Um, as we go forward with this Green New Deal, as I understand it, so I want to sort of just ask you sort of a little bit about the mechanics of things going forward. As I understand it, um, um, the plan is to have a committee and then take till 2020 to sort of figure out w with a lot of input where we're going. Um, and, I, and, and so at, I, over the last 10 or 12 years, the movement to climate movements learned a lot of lessons about climate justice. In the Midwest, people have learned about uh, how important stopping eminent domain for private gain would be. Across North America, we've learned how important tribal sovereignty is to these fights. Over and over and over, we've learned that a key lesson is not just to say we're going to do green jobs. It's going to say we have to stop new fossil fuel infrastructure because mm -hmm. we'll, if we keep digging the hole deeper at the same time that we're digging out of it, we never get out of it. So how, what's the sort of mechanism in your mind over the next couple of years for people to take those lessons and those concerns and help make them into this policy that, that maybe after the 2020 elections we'll be able to really do something with. Absolutely. Well, the good news is that we're not starting from scratch. There's so many people like Van, like uh, Senator, uh, Senator Merkley, who, who had established the select committee when he was in the House, a previous select committee. Uh, there's a lot of legislation that has been drafted to already start addressing some of these smaller issues, just, just transitions in coal, uh, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's, it's it's our energy infrastructure, whether it's battery, when we're looking at battery grids and so on. There's a lot of work that has already been done, but it needs to be consolidated and brought under the tent of a Green New Deal. And when we try to solve this issue piecemeal, we are not going to get it solved in time. That's why we are asking for this really great, uh, ambitious, singular plan. And that is why you know, I believe that the progressive movement is the only movement that has answers right now. We're the only ones that are drawing from the lessons of history, from Franklin Delano Roosevelt, from uh, some of the most ambitious uh, projects that we have pursued in in American history. And that truly, again, is the scale that it's going to take. So, uh, you know, I think that, that there's so much work that has been done and there's some uh, outlying questions, especially when it comes to investment in technologies. When we as a public choose to invest in private, uh, when, we, when we as a public choose to invest in new technologies, we deserve a return on that investment. And for far too long, we gave money to Tesla, we gave money to a ton of people, and we got no return on our investment that the public made in creating technologies. And it's about time that we get our due because it's the public that funded and financed a lot of innovative technologies. And that's another, you know, thing Let me to go. just jump in and thanks so much. For